Hello again. I mentioned, I don't know if I've mentioned to you that puzzles are a wonderful thing for your brain. They um, help you focus, they help you calm down, they're wonderful for your brain. And they help you think like a mathematician too. So, but let's think about it in terms of art, okay? So here's a puzzle that I borrowed from Mrs. Sniff and she likes to do puzzles. So this is one of a nice little country scene with a fence and some trees and it's got some different color in there. So I'm gonna put that here. This is Mr. Harry's drawing, painting, and he told me I could use it, but I'm not sure I have the heart to do what I wanna do with it. My son found this one when he visited Alaska. And the really cool thing about this one is that if you look through it, the shapes are actually Piece, the pieces look like animals. They look like the animals that are in it, but it's not like cut around the owl that's in it. They're really crazy, and it's so fun to do because it was really colorful and the shapes were very intricate. This one was made out of wood. Hope they don't fall down. This one I got because it reminded me of going to this museum, the Ringling Brothers Museum. And so it has all these pictures of circus things and I happen to love the circus. So this was one that I just got out and these are the kind of things that calm me down. But when we're talking about it for art, I want you to think about making the, um, as you find your pieces, you are looking for the colors that match, the lines that match, the shapes that match, the shapes that fit into other shapes and things like that. So all of those are elements of art that you have been talking about all year. So remember, com, um, color, line, shape, value. The value means like if it's light blue over here and dark blue over here, then that's the value of a color. Well, I'm ready to take it to the next step. Not just do the puzzles, but make a puzzle. So I'm gonna show you an easy way with leftover stuff that you can do. So I found this on a magazine, and I thought it was a great picture. I just love my little leprechaun there. It's a great little um, St. Patrick's Day picture of this magazine. And I would take it and I would glue it right onto the back of my uh, graham cracker box. <laughs> and so I did that with some pictures that I liked. I could use a cake mix box. I could use my macaroni and cheese. You guys have boxes, I know you do. So just find one that you like, a picture that you like. So this is one my daughter found. It's a little dog in the snow. Isn't that the cutest thing? And he looks like he's having a good time. But if you think about it, I bet the value of those whites would be kind of hard to find the pieces, wouldn't they? And then this one was, we think it's a guy in a submarine. We just thought it was really cool. And then this is a kid swinging at the lake, swinging over the lake and ready to drop in. Anyway, we thought those were great pictures and we just used the back of our, our boxes that we had. Now, to make them into the pieces, that's where it gets pretty complicated. So it doesn't have to be too complicated though. I think I'll use um, this one. That's gonna be the, what's right side up? Doesn't matter if it's right side up or upside down. I'm going to turn it to the back side. You can still see the table, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. Now, once again, this is not something that has to be perfect because you're making puzzle pieces. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a grid. All right. If some of you older kids have learned the word grid. That's where you have lines that go horizontal and lines that go vertical. So you're just making a bunch of squares. And then even my squares don't have to be squares, they can be rectangles. That doesn't have to be perfect. And so then I'm gonna do that, and do that, and do that, all the way across. So there I've got my pieces. Now you can't see it on the front, I want my drawing on the back. And then I will start cutting, okay? So I'm gonna start cutting. But I don't want to stay right to the line because that would just give me some basic squares to put together. And if that's the way you want your puzzle to be, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I want mine to have those funky shapes. You know how they do on the puzzles? 
we were just talking about what do you call those pieces that stick out and the pieces that go in? Are they arms and legs and heads and stuff? Anyway, whatever you call them. And if it's too hard to cut a circle or a half a circle, then just do triangles. That's fine with me. So I go around, I hope you can see it. And I do think scissors are easier, but some people you have an X-Acto knife, which is a, a tool that you can use to make really precise cuts. So I cut this piece out and I go all the way through until I've cut all these pieces out all different ways, different fun ways. So do you see how that goes? Now, here's the finished product. And I can tell, just like when you are making a puzzle, you can tell the front side from the back side. So the Cheez-It side is the back side, and the front side is a picture of Cuba. Okay, I don't remember who wanted to go to Cuba, but anyway, they found this picture of an advertisement for going to Cuba. And so I take all my pieces, and just like you would with a, a puzzle out of a box, you make sure they're all turned to the right side. And just like you would with a puzzle from a box, you can figure out which ones are the edge pieces. Because I didn't cut any funny shapes out of the edge pieces. Okay, so as I'm working, I'm trying to figure out what would go together. So I look at all my pieces and I know it says Cuba. That's an easy part to figure out. So I'm looking at the lines that make the letters for Cuba. See? U, look at that, there's the U, it fits together. And this looks like a P until I put the B together, Cuba. There I've got one part of the puzzle already done. Then I keep going and I know what buildings look like and I know this looks like it goes with this, so that's another part of the puzzle that's done. And I just keep working until it's all put back together. If each one of you in your family makes one puzzle, then you'll have enough for each to make to put together and that'll be a whole night's worth of fun. Maybe even a weekend if it takes you that long. But anyway, I hope you enjoy making a puzzle or doing a puzzle. Focus on those colors, lines, shapes, and of course the value of the colors too. Have a good weekend, bye.